The producers of Tech AV training programs welcome you to this first program in the series Mechanical Couplings and Alignment. This is program number MCA1 in which we shall overview the general subject of couplings and alignment principles. Please ensure that you have read the resource notes in your trainee workbook as this will help you to better understand the subject. When you see a discussion or practical logo on the screen, then stop the tape and perform the suggested exercise as outlined in the self-test provided in the workbook. Let's now proceed with task number one, which is the overview section. In any major industrial complex, factory, hospital, treatment plant, chemical processing operation, or even in high-rise office complexes, you will find machinery that is driven either by an electric or perhaps a diesel motor. In order to transmit the power from the motor to the machine or device being driven, there has to be a form of coupling. The device used to join two shafts end to end is generally referred to as a mechanical coupling. Other types of couplings or power transmissions are belts, chains and gears. These types will be discussed in later modules. Returning to mechanical couplings, sometimes called inline couplings, you will discover that many types exist. In principle, however, there are two basic types, namely rigid and flexible types. Let's first look at rigid types, the most basic of which is the flange face type. In such a coupling, two half couplings are attached to corresponding shafts by keys. The two coupling halves are then bolted together to form a solid connection between the shafts. The major disadvantage of a rigid coupling is that it demands almost perfect alignment of the machine's shafts and the mating surfaces at the coupling. Any deviation from perfect alignment would impose unwanted forces upon the shafts, the bearings and the coupling itself. The symptom of misalignment is usually manifested in the form of vibration. Today it is most usual to encounter the so-called flexible type couplings, primarily because they are able to, in effect, absorb small degrees of misalignment. Some of the more common types of flexible couplings include gear type, steel grid, popularly called a bibby type, flexible disc or flexible link types, and roller chain types. Couplings that contain non-metallic components such as rubber, neoprene, fibers or other soft materials are classified as elastomeric couplings. Perhaps the most popular elastomeric type coupling is the shear coupling, usually known as a Fenaflex type, but also referred to as a rubber tire coupling. Another popular elastomeric type is the rubber block or spider type coupling. Next we see a rubber disc type coupling, sometimes called a compression coupling. Here we see a pin and bush type coupling. Another popular type and the last we shall show is the flexible sleeve coupling. All elastomeric couplings utilize a soft element, often rubber, to absorb or cushion shocks between the metal components. By now, you are possibly beginning to realize that couplings vary considerably, and obviously each has its advantages or disadvantages. The choice of a coupling is largely determined by design engineers, but factors such as cost, speeds of shaft rotation, power transmitted, loads encountered, 
ease of maintenance, and quiet operation must also be taken into consideration. Let's move on to the more practical subject of alignment and discuss some basic principles that you should be very aware of, especially in terms of proper maintenance. As a general rule, most plant and equipment is powered by an electric or diesel motor. For purposes of maintenance, it is convenient to be able to separate either unit. In practice, the driven unit is mounted onto a base. The motor or drive unit is then mounted onto the same base or on an adjacent base. The drive unit shaft is then connected to the driven unit shaft by a coupling arrangement. In an ideal situation, the two shafts would be absolutely coincident, meaning that their common axes or centers would be the same viewed from the side and from above. Unfortunately, perfect alignment is seldom achieved owing to factors such as bearing clearances, base settling, mechanical loads imposed by pipework and many other factors. Any slight deviation from the perfect situation is considered to be misalignment. There are two basic parameters of misalignment, namely actual misalignment, sometimes known as angular misalignment, and radial misalignment, sometimes called parallel misalignment. Whenever two units are connected, it must always be understood that their shafts must be in line. It is wrong to expect misaligned shafts to be corrected by the coupling. When we perform an alignment operation, we are in effect attempting to align the common axes of both shafts before a coupling is connected. Once we have attained a common axis, then we can look to the coupling to check if each half coupling runs concentric or true to the shaft. This is achieved by checking the various runout factors using a dial test indicator to assess whether the shaft runs true and if the half coupling runs true both axially and radially. Half couplings should never contact each other. A specified gap must be maintained to allow for shaft end float and thermal expansion factors. Do not expect a flexible coupling to compensate for alignment inaccuracies caused during fitting. Although the term flexible implies that a coupling can bend or twist, in actual fact, the error of misalignment would never exceed 0.05 millimeters. During normal operation, a motor or a driven unit may move slightly due to factors such as base settling, pipework strain, or even wear in the bearings. For this reason, it is extremely important that a coupling, even a flexible coupling, must be aligned as perfectly as possible initially, so as to be able to cope with running errors or shifts. Careless or inaccurate initial alignment will result in rapid bearing failure, vibration, wear in the coupling itself and possible shaft fracture. Let's move on to the subject of safety, especially in the area of mechanical couplings. There are 10 basic rules to keep in mind always, namely, work only on an isolated machine according to the ruling regulations. Remove the safety guard only when the motor has come to a complete standstill. Use the correct lifting equipment to raise and lower heavy units. Keep your work area clean and tidy to prevent tripping accidents. Clean up any oil or liquid spills to prevent slipping and fire hazard. 
avoid the use of flammable liquids for cleaning purposes, especially on electrical apparatus. Ensure that tools and equipment are removed from the coupling area before reconnecting the supply. And replace safety guards or covers before starting up the equipment. Notify your supervisor in the event of any malfunction or personal injury. Exercise your common sense. This, above all else, will ensure your safety. After the break, we'll take a look at the subject of alignment preparation. <laughs>